Okay, you've been around for a few weeks, uh, but we can officially say now, Matt Southall, welcome to Charlton Athletic. Let's start at the very beginning. Uh, January the 2nd, it was confirmed that East Street Investments had purchased the club. Why Charlton? What, what is it about Charlton Athletic that made it such an appealing prospect for ESI? Oh, it's a big club. Um, you know, the heritage of the club, um, the fan base, uh, the location, uh, you know, it's a Premier League club. Um, and from us as investors, we just saw an opportunity. Obviously, Roland, he made it available um, it was quite a while ago. You know, and I've kept an eye on it. Promotion, you know, and, and the position that the club's in at the moment, uh, you know, back in the championship, it, it just made it really attractive for us. Um, we know that you've been at quite a lot of games already over the last month or so. Um, what have you made of your Charlton experience so far, seeing the games, meeting fans, all that kind of stuff? What have you made of what you've experienced? Oh, it's, it's been fantastic. Um, when, you know, when we agreed the deal um, and before it came out, I didn't expect the le level of enthusiasm from the fans um, and the reception that, that, that we, we would get. Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. What are the main objectives and aims for, for ESI, both in the short term, obviously we're halfway through the season now, but the long-term perspectives as well? Yeah, like with any investment, you know, it is a long-term strategy for us. Um, first and foremost, it's sensible and it's sustainable. Um, you know, it's not going to be a boom and bust. You know, we're not going to come in and, you know, look to <laughs> buy Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, uh, Gareth Bale, as it's been, you know, touted on Twitter. Um, you know, it's building it for, for the long-term stability of the club. What it, I mean, can you tell us a little bit more about that strategy and how, how it might work towards gaining those objectives? Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's building on the foundations that have already been set. You know, Lee, Steve, they've done a fantastic job already, you know, identifying uh, players, you know, lower leagues, uh, the academy, um, you know, we've got a fantastic academy that's brought through players year after year, you know, and it's investing into that um, and building on those foundations, you know, slowly, you know, we can't just come in and, you know, start throwing £10 million pe uh, pounds on this player and that player, you know, taking the wage bill, you know, from where we are now to you know, multiples of that. It's doing it slowly, sensibly, uh, and, and sustainably. Um, as of any takeover, obviously, there's always loads of questions about the ins and outs of how the breakdown of the sale of the club and all that kind of stuff goes. But one thing Charlton fans have been discussing is the valley, the training ground, and how how the sale um, works with that. Um, can you confirm? Yeah, that yeah, it of is lock, stock, and barrel. Yeah, so effectively, it is lock, stock, and barrel. However, uh, from my initial call. Uh, to, to Roland's representatives, which was at the end, end of August to completion, 2nd of January. You know, for us, th the main priority was getting in for the January window. So it's a two-stage transaction uh, where we've, we've purchased the club and the stadium uh, and we have a, a commitment uh, to, to, to purchase the rest of the assets uh, over a period of time. Um, but again, you know, the main priority is get in, invest because the way the club was going, you know, the, the recent run of results, if there wasn't investment into the, into the club and into the team, uh, who knows where, where we would have been going. However, that's not the case. You know, we're working hard. Um, you know, I, I speak regularly to Steve Gallen. Uh, I speak to Lee. Uh, and we're looking at bringing bodies in. Um, we'll talk about on-the-pitch matters um, in a bit. Um, off the pitch, first of all, will you be looking to make changes off the pitch? Um, if so, what, what are the priorities? I am guess I'm talking about the here at the Valley and all that kind of stuff. You know, what we've, what we've inherited is a very lean structure. Um, some loyal staff, a lot of loyal staff, um, and everybody's been working so hard, um, you know, off pitch uh, as well as on pitch to get the club to where it is now. You know, and as I said in my statement, what what we feel we, we've inherited is the foundations to be able to invest, improve, you know, if we need to bring in members of staff that can strengthen in areas, you know, marketing, commercial, you know, the commercial side of things. You know, if you look at how the club makes revenues, you know, you get your primary, your TV money, which is obviously important being in the championship. Then what, you know, commercially, you know, a lot of 
fans and a lot of commercial partners, they disassociated from the club under the old regime. You know, and that's something where, you know, I, I, I spoke to the commercial team, I said, anyone that you want me to speak to, you know, put me in front of them. You know, uh, it's all about reconnecting, you know, with the local community, with the fans, with the local businesses, uh, you know, and moving the club forward. I guess with that in mind, it's, it's kind of a rebuild in a way. Exactly. Yeah. And um, talk about the community trust now as well. It's something that's, that's very close to the hearts of, of a lot of Charlton fans and staff, of course. Um, QPR before Christmas, you, were, you, you went and met the Upbeats, um, ever popular with the Charlton fans. Um, how did you find that? It was so humbling. It, I, can't even, I can't even explain. Um, you know, Jason Morgan, I've been lucky enough to have dinner with him uh, up at Middlesbrough. Uh, he, he, he's obviously spoken to me a lot about the community trust, and it's it's something that I feel that the club it needs to reconnect with the community. You know, I, I understand it's been hard for the fans and the community over the last few years. You know, with the ownership of the club, um, and that's something that you know we were committed to build on, uh, and it's something that I will be getting involved in, uh, and the rest of the board, um, you know, going forward. Um, why is it, you've obviously been out meeting fans as well, the first time you were here coming through yeah. the fans bar and... Um, uh, can I just, I response. did not expect that <laughs> in the slightest. I, I think, um, I saw on Twitter we were having a FIFA tournament. Yeah. So yeah. I said to, I said to, uh, to, to, to Rav, I said, well, let's go down, I'll have a game of FIFA. And um, we went in and um, it was George Lapsy was playing a fan. Yeah. So Ravi was like, oh, I'll show you the rest of the bar. So I was like, okay, brilliant, yeah. So we walk through and, um, you know, you kind of see people kind of taking a second look and we got to the very end and then a young boy came up. He says, oh, Mr. Salvo, can I get a picture with you? I said, yeah, of course you can. And then the next thing, there was, there was more and more people and then, yeah, you saw what happened then and we had to make a quick exit. But <laughs> I did that, that, Yeah, you know, it's not something we expected, but, you know, having seen the reaction from the fans and given you know the previous regime you know very rarely came to the valley i think you know the fans being able to be present and you know and i, I brought my family i brought my daughter um you know i'm a football fan as well you know i enjoy coming to the games i enjoy watching the team i enjoy supporting the team so for me it's, it's only natural yeah i guess that's kind of my next part of my next question really i mean why is it so important to to go and meet fans and have a relationship with the fans if you're going to be a chairman of a football club like Charlton? The football club's the heart of the community. Um, you know, as I said in my first statement, we're all the custodians, you know, so the club was here a long, a long time before we were here and it's going to be here a long time after. Uh, I, see, uh, I see owners come, um, I don't necessarily, necessarily agree with how they run their, their club. I, I have my way of how I want to run the club uh, and how I want to connect with fans. Uh, and I, that's what I'm going to continue to do. You know, whether, I'll be honest, you know, there will be decisions that I have to make that fans may not like. But I will, you know, I'll be here and I'll be vocal and, I, and I, I'll explain the rationale behind why I make those decisions. And it will be in the long term interest of the club. Um, obviously, we're in the, the very early infancy of, of all this um, and the ownership. Um, we've had the press releases, the original press release, with a little bit of information about the people involved. Um, but can you give us a little bit more info about the structure behind the group and who's involved? Yeah, so East Street, East Street Investments is it, the vehicle to purchase the club. So, obviously, uh, His Excellency Tanoon, um, Jonathan Heller, um, and myself. Um, I mean, I've been working with uh, the Middle East for a few years now. Uh, so it's not something that's brand new. Um, when I first sat down and spoke to them and explained about the long-term potential of the club, um, it, they bought into it straight away. You know, and the fact that it's a London-based club, you know, as you will have seen on Instagram, uh, His Excellency gets a little bit carried away now and again. Um, but that, you know, it's enthusiasm. You know, he is really, really behind this. Uh, and he's, he's committed to making this a success as well. You know, he oversees over 60 companies and every single business, he, he puts his, his passion in to make it a success. And this, I think, 
um, will, will be no different. And with His Excellency, is, is he someone that will remain in the background? Will he be coming to games or, or is that very much being left? left yeah, to no, um, he, he, it is, he will be coming to games. Um, he won't be coming to many. He, you know, we're planning on getting him here before the end of the month. Um, so that'll be good. He's looking forward to coming and experiencing a, a match. Um, but no, predominantly it'll be myself uh, running the club day to day. Uh, obviously with the staff that were already here. Um, and Jonathan, who's obviously highly experienced in business, uh, he'll be having a, an input as well. OK, um, let's talk about the footballing yeah. matters now. The, the thing that all the fans want to hear, um, a priority for them, yeah. and certainly the football club is um, Lee Bowyer and his, and his staff. Um, what are your hopes for them as far as the future goes? And, and if I can say it, a, a new contract. Yeah, Lee's been, been fantastic. Um, you know, since he took over his interim um, and then obviously getting promoted last season, you know, we, we've met on a few occasions. We've had, we've had a, a, some good time together. So I could kind of portray to him what our long term ab ambitions are, you know, because that's important for him as well. You know, he wants to know that the new ownership coming in um, are going in the right direction, have got the, got the right vision. Um, I've spoken with his agent. Um, and what we decided for now, obviously being in January, um, is to focus on the playing side of things and try and tie that up after the window. I'm comfortable with that. Um, you know, and, and like I say, I think the main thing for me is ensuring that the club stays in the championship and then obviously we can take each day as it comes from there. Um, with that in mind, obviously you've mentioned that it was important to to get this done before the January transfer window. We're in that now, we're a few days in. Um, what are the plans for the next month? Oh, well, listen, we need to strengthen. We need, we need more bodies in. You know, Andre Green coming in, um, very happy with that. Um, he's one that we looked at in the summer. Uh, financially, we couldn't get to where, 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 where Aston Villa were. Um, we were look, luckily, lucky, lucky enough now to be able to, uh, to have got that over the line. Uh, he did well yesterday. Um, you know, we've got a few offers out for other players. Um, yeah, it's just, the January window is a funny one. Um, you know, prices are inflated. Obviously, given who's behind the takeover, uh, quotations get, get inflated as well. When, when, you know, Steve's putting the call in, you know, inquiring about players, you know, a couple of zeros go on the end. Um, but yeah, no, listen, Everyone's working around the clock to to uh, bring players in. I guess the positive side of things, and you know the injury list, which is a big negative, but players are coming back, aren't they? So they're all going to almost be like new signings going into January. So hopefully by the end of January, not only with those new signings, we'll have hopefully a more full complement, which can only help towards. Yeah, but survival. I mean, if you if you look at how we were doing before we started getting all the injuries, you know, we were competitive. You know, we were, you know we drew against West Brom. You know, we beat Derby here. Um, so it's building, it's building on that, you know. I, I know from speaking to Lee, you know, he was quite happy with his squad. So if we can bring in a few key players, um, obviously we've had the serious injury to to Jonathan, who's who's unfortunately gone back, um, you know. But replacing him is a massive priority. And, you know, I'm confident we will do that. Let's um, talk a little bit more about the fans again. Uh, we've, we've touched on it a little bit, but when you talk about the potential of this football club um, with an engaged fan base behind it. That's huge, isn't it? It's endless. It's an endless. It, for me, it's about reconnecting with the fans. Uh, obviously, there's a bit, been a disconnect over the last few years. Um, you know, but reconnecting with the fans, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do that on, on Twitter. You know, I'm, I'm visible at games. You know, I go into the lounges. Um, you know, when I first came, I, you know, people were saying, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. I was like, oh, I can go in there, you know, and then obviously what happened in the crossbars, you know, it, it's nice, you know, I'm go, I'll try and get and have a beer with some of the fans, you know, but ultimately, with the fans behind the new ownership, you know, and, and the positive messages we're getting, you know, it's where we can get to, who knows. Obviously, the fan base is famous for not only you know, being instrumental in the survival of this football club in the past, um, but also the growth of it in the 90s, all that kind of stuff. 
Um, what can they do now to, to help? It sounds very basic, I guess, come and support the club, but what can they do to, to help grow us and take us to another level? Well, well, it is really, it's simple. It's, you know, come back, support. You know, I know a lot of fans, you know, I, I get direct messages, I get tagged in tweets with people saying, um, you know, I've been staying away. What, one that I, re I remember so clearly, I remember seeing on Twitter, um, there was a, a lady and she tweeted a picture of her son. And um, I didn't actually see it till after the first game. And she said, oh, uh, you know, new ownership, new dawn. Um, do I need to buy a ticket for my 18 month old child? And then the next day she tweeted, she'd been at the game, she tweeted a picture of them together. And for me, it was so powerful. You know, the fact that people are coming back, people are supporting, you know, it's only good for the club going forward. Because as I said before, you know, where we can generate revenues is, is quite limited in terms of TV money, commercial. You know, if we have a, a, a full capacity, 27,000 fans week in, week out, that all doesn't only motivate the, the team, you know, but it also generates more, more revenue for us to be able to comply with financial fair play, uh, invest more money into the playing squad, etc., etc. And, you know, as the, as the revenues increase, you know, as can the costs. And it's about doing it sustainably. And we can only do that with the fans as well. And I guess um, Lebo always talks about the importance of the fans uh, as far as the performance on the pitch goes. And that, you know, first and foremost, that is the thing that can, can really help. Oh, the, the fans have been amazing. You know, the, there's the drums and the, the atmosphere. And I think, I think teams find it hard to come here and play as well. You know, with the fact that the fans are always singing you know, against, against Holt, the weather was horrendous, yeah. you know. I remember speaking to Nathan after the game, the, the groundsman, and he was like, oh, I don't know how the pitch is going to hold up, you know, because the conditions were that bad. Constantly, all through the game, singing, singing, pushing the, pushing the team on. And just finally, if I was a fan wavering um, whether or not to buy a half-season ticket now for the next few months, what would you say? Well, obviously, I'm going to say buy it, aren't I? <laughs> but at the same time, you know, it's... It's true, you know, we are here, we're here to reconnect with the fans, you know, we're here to build the relationship back with the, the community, you know, and 27,000 fans week in, week out will push us on. You know, we need to get back to where the team were. I think we were, we were fourth in the league at the beginning of the season. You know, the team were performing well and we can get back, to, we can get back there. Let's uh, round things up now by talking about the academy, uh, such a huge part in this football club, always has been. Um, no it's more punctuated than the game against West Brom on Sunday, uh, in which 11 players involved in that match day squad uh, have come through the academy. How important is it going to be for the success of the future of this football massively, club? Massively, massively. I met Steve Avery for the first time yesterday. Obviously, you know, I've spoken to a lot of people you know, who speak so highly of him. Um, you know, it, it just goes, goes to show, yesterday we had a 16-year-old, you know, third youngest player in history, you know, after John Joe, Paul Kincheski. It, it, the players are coming through, you know, and as, as I go back to generating revenues for the club, you know, we aren't naive enough to, to say we're not a selling club. We are, Liverpool's a selling club, you know, Leicester's a selling club, you know, so for us to increase our revenues, you know, we have to bring the players through. We enjoy them they bring success to the team and they move their careers on. You know, like, like you know, Joe Rebo, obviously, you know, he went across border. That sort of situation will not happen un under my ownership. It will not happen. Uh, you know, uh, Joe Gomez, you know, he's doing well at Liverpool. He played again last night. You know, the players that we brought through, he's going to continue, you know, and that is an area where we're going to invest uh, heavily, you know, we're currently category two. Our, our objective, you know, in the next couple of years, we want to be a category one club. We have to be. Matt, thank you so much. Um, yes. I know you're a very busy man uh, and it's a very busy few weeks ahead. Yes. Um, here's to a bright future. Um, thank you for, for getting involved with this football club and um, we'll hope to sit down with you again soon yeah, for sure. and um, see where we are. Thanks very much.